the Tomb of Sargeras. This ancient structure has been a focal point since Warcraft 2, leading those who enter it to infernal power or death. Now it stands as the last bastion of the Burning Legion's assault on Azeroth. It is up to us, heroes and leaders of the Alliance and Horde, to push them back. But first, let's do a quick rundown of its history. The Tomb of Sargeras was originally the Temple of Alun. During the War of the Ancients and the first invasion of the Legion, they attempted to open a second portal in this temple. However, they got beaten back, and the Pillars of Creation were used to put magical seals on the temple to stop that nonsense. Then the Well of Eternity blew up and sent this sucker to the bottom of the ocean. Fast forward many years later, Sargeras, who is the leader of the Burning Legion, sent his avatar to Azeroth and had a showdown with the Guardian Aegwyn. She won and found the temple once more and sealed the corpse of the avatar in the temple, thus making it the tomb of Sargeras. A couple decades later, during the Second War, Gul'dan would show up here and raise it from the ocean, hoping to steal the power within for his own gains. He would be torn apart by demons, as would the rest of the orc forces he brought with the exception of Drakthul, who's still hanging around if you want to visit him. He's not a happy guy. Later, some other orcs came in to steal the scepter of Sargeras and actually succeeded. Then, during the Third War, Illidan showed up to take the Eye of Sargeras, being chased by Maeve. This was an in-and-out job like the rest of them. Not many people want to hang out here for long, despite Sargeras apparently leaving his powerful artifacts, like, all over the damn place. Now we arrive at Legion. Alternate Universe Gul'dan shows up and pops the tomb open with the help of Kil'jaeden and opens a portal which started off the expansion pack. Even though there is a top portion of the temple called the Cathedral of the Eternal Night, the raid itself goes down into the basement. So now that you got the history lesson, let's talk about the foes you'll be facing down in the tomb's depths. Goroth is a great example of what happens in the Legion if you mess up badly, but they don't want to fire you. They set you on fire. See, instead of just killing him, they replaced all of his body parts with parts from an Infernal, which, as you can imagine, is excruciatingly painful. He's pretty desperate to kill us off because doing so will impress his masters and they'll turn him back to normal. I like thinking of this guy as an example of what happens when you're so far into the Legion. They will inflict unending torment upon you, but you know you have nowhere else to go and they won't let you die, so your only hope is to do better. Next up is the Demonic Inquisition. If you're expecting a Spanish Inquisition joke here, then you may not understand how the Spanish Inquisition works. That being said, these two are Fell Lord and Jailer who team up to torture the ever-loving hell out of people, and they're really good at it. They're the two who are responsible for breaking captives' wills and turning them to the Legion. It's assumed they're the ones responsible for breaking Velen's son and changing him into the Eredar Rakish, especially if they are the chosen pair of Kil'jaeden. Put down this tag team and move on to the Collapse section. Oh look, here's the obligatory not green section. Naga here because they want to steal the Tidestone of Golgoneth back from when we stole it in the Wrath of Ashera instance after they stole it from the Academy in Azura. Steelers keepers, guys. Anyway, this hulking monstrosity is not only big, but has a cult of murlocs who follow him and obey his every whim. His title is also the Bludgeoner, so I think you have a good idea of what he's best at. After making fish paste of him, you meet the lady who's in charge of this Naga infestation, Mistress Sazine. I probably pronounced that wrong. There's a lot of S's in there. Either way, she's one of the Naga Sea Witches who typically have lots of arms and use spells. She also likes to summon creatures from the depths of the oceans to attack and has a bow, so she's basically a hunter. So do what you do with all hunters and berate them for using Barrage, and let's get back to the tomb itself. The Sisters of the Moon were the guardians of this place when it used to be the Temple of Elune. Unfortunately, they died, and their spirits decided to hang out while the temple got corrupted by the fell energies there. Now they want to kill everyone who walks in, which really should not be a surprise for you at this point, because corrupted elves should be old hat to you in this expansion. Other than doing this fun thing where only one of them can remain corporeal at a time, there's not much to them. But here's a fun fact. Naisha, the first lieutenant of Maiev Shadow Song, was supposed to be a part of this boss fight, but she got replaced. Instead, she's now part of a quest within the tomb. This is because she died during Maiev's pursuit of Illidan through this tomb due to the cave -in. The Desolate Host. The Legion moved in this thing called the Engine of Souls, which feeds on the dead and turns them into abominations, which is just swell and dandy. Soul Queen Dajana hangs out in the spirit realm controlling the Soul Engine. You folks need to beat up on both of their cheese until the engine spits out the actual Desolate Host, which is basically just green Marogar. There's not much lore in this thing, it's a new addition to the tomb since the Legion showed up, but it is an excellent example of the corrupting influence of the Legion and the types of devices they have on hand to do this sort of thing. Creeps. Now we get to the fun part of the tomb. You know, because everything else wasn't fun. See, once you pass the Desolate Host, you find out that even before this place was the Temple of Loon, it was a Titan structure. Egwin found it after she defeated the Avatar of Sargeras and used the Titan machinery to help seal away the Avatar. She assigned the Titan Construct here, known as the Maiden of Vigilance and the Maiden of Valor, to watch over the Avatar and make sure nothing bad happened to it. Like everything else in the tomb, the Maidens got themselves corrupted as hell and we need to beat the corruption out of them. Maiden of Vigilance is the first fight. 
The Maiden of Valor shows up in the fight with the Avatar, who starts off first bound to the Titan machinery, but with the help of the Maiden and Kil'jaeden, is released and blasts the floor open to start Phase 2. Now, it's important to note that this is just the fallen Avatar of Sargeras. Though it contains a massive amount of power, it is no longer an Avatar of Sargeras, merely its corpse. Which is quite concerning, given that the dead Avatar of Sargeras is still this powerful. Makes you wonder how powerful a real Avatar, or even the Titan himself, will be. Now, after you kill the Avatar, Killy J bails through the portal back to his flagship. Velen, in a surprise act of complete rage, is having none of that laugh and run away villain bullshit and chases after him with the rest of the raid. The final fight takes place on Kil'jaeden's flagship overlooking the planet of Argus, the homeworld of the Draenei having been completely corrupted and consumed by the Twisting Nether. And it is here where we finish the job we started back in the Sunwell. You see, Kil'jaeden is a very important figure in the Legion. He is the one alongside Archimonde who accepted Sargeras' offer and damned the Eridar race. He was then known as the Deceiver. He is the one who corrupted the orcs through Gul'dan, creating the Horde, slaughtering the Draenei, and sending them into Azeroth. He is the one who tortured Ner'zhul when that invasion failed, turned him into the Lich King to bring a scourge upon the Eastern Kingdoms. He is the one who sent Illidan after Arthas after the Lich King betrayed him, which led to Illidan losing and escaping to Outland to build up his forces. And it was he who corrupted Kael'thas and caused him to use the Sunwell to summon him into Azeroth. We believe this fight with Kil'jaeden will be his final stand. Nearly every race on Azeroth has a reason to want a piece of him. Orcs, humans, elves, undead, all have tragedies and hardships that can be traced back to this scheming piece of Legion trash. So you run through that portal, you take down his flagship, and you give him hell. For the Alliance, for the Horde, for Azeroth. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and take care, everybody.